If you're having problems with shifting on a 4L60 or a 4L80, whether you're using the Ultimate LS system or a GoShift system, today we're gonna to go over how to diagnose the system and to make sure that the system's set up correctly and you have a good working shifting transmission. When we're setting up the software for the Ultimate LS to work with Trans Control, we're gonna make sure that certain settings are correct. So we're gonna start by going to the Phytech initial setup, and then we're gonna find automatic transmission. In automatic transmission, a few things need to be a certain way for the transmission control to be on. The first one is this 4LXOE trans. When you get the system, it may start as other. Other would be if you're using a manual transmission or you're hooked up to like a Turbo 350 or a or something like that, a different transmission that's not a 4L60 or a 4L80 variant. So since we're running a 4L60, we're gonna make sure that that one's set to 4LXOE, hit the OK button to send to the ECU, and the one below it is whether you're using the 4L60 or 4L80. So you select the one that you want, and then 4L60 is what we have here, so we're gonna leave it on 4L60. The other important settings are your tire diameter and your rear end gear ratio, but even if those are off, the system should still shift. So these two settings are the most important to get started with. So now that we're certain that those are set the way that we want, we're going to go back into the dashboard, we're going to key off, we're going to wait for the values to disappear, and then we know the settings are set. So now that the values have disappeared, the system is saved. We can key back on. And I actually want to show you another way to set up the system, actually a way that I prefer when getting started. So under right Cal to ECU, we have some default settings. So I have options for 4L60 or 4L80, and the, the uh, reluctor input for the engine. So before even getting started with the setup, I actually like to load this value so then it puts it already in the system for the transmission that we're using. So being that this is an early 5.3 liter with a 24 tooth reluctor and a 4L60 transmission, I can just write that file to the system and I already have those settings set up. So sometimes if you don't know if your settings are correct in the software, you can go straight to one of these settings load it because you know that the 4L60 or 4L80 transmission is preloaded. So at most all that you would have to do is make some adjustments to your cubic inch displacement and the cam selection in the software just to make sure that you have the transmission set up properly. So the next thing I want to check in the software is to make sure that the vehicle speed is reading. And there's also another little hidden menu in the manual transmission where you can turn off the vehicle speed sensor. So this one is marked to VSS. If it's on no VSS, you wanna make sure that you change it to the VSS. When you get a system out of the box, this should not be a problem, but this does kinda of hang people up every once in a while if they had a manual transmission and they switched over to an automatic or they're getting a system second hand or getting someone else's tune. So that's another spot that you can kind of check in there just to make sure that you have the VSS hooked up. Otherwise, what you would see is when you're driving the vehicle, you can go to speed, you would be driving around moving the tires and your speed would stay at zero. That would be another good sign that the vehicle speed isn't reading, it may be off or that connection may have an issue for the, um, the vehicle speed sensor. I have seen in past times where when someone plugs in the vehicle speed sensor, the pin gets stuck and pushes backwards so the pin isn't making contact. So just doing a quick little check of popping that sensor out underneath the vehicle, just undoing the connector, looking at the end, make sure the pins are straight and intact and in the right location and not push back into the connector and then plugging it back in. So that's another thing that you'd have to look at. Now, if the system did not have vehicle speed, the only thing that would happen is the vehicle force up shift would be your shift point. So on a normal shifting pattern, which all these systems are preloaded with a base cowl in it for your entire shift, it is close to stock, if not a little more aggressive, 
you should be shifting at a lower RPM, 2,000, 2,500 RPM. But if you find yourself going up 3,000, 4,000 RPM and you're not in the throttle at all, chances are it has something to do with your vehicle speed sensor. Um, another check that you wanna go through is you wanna go down to your fault code section, open up your faults and see if you have any fault codes in relation to the trans control. So if you have something like a shift solenoid or you have um, a torque converter lockup um, clutch or some sort of a pulse width code in there, that would give you some sort of clue that there's an issue going on with the shifting or how the system's set up. Another thing that I do want to bring up from time to time that I see is in the automatic transmission section is the 4L60 or 4L80 selection. If you have a 4L65 or a 4L70, that's still a 4L6XE selection. The 4L80 and the 4L85 is your 4L8XE selection. Now, if you have the software set up to run the opposite transmission, the system would be throwing fault codes because between those two transmission types, there are different pinout and setups that the system turns on and shuts off or crosses the location of. So that's a major thing to make sure of if you're showing some fault codes. But with that said, once we have all the software set up correct, if we go into our dashboard, we should be able to go to our shifter location, which is marked as P. With just the key on engine off, the system won't show any gear selection. So if I go to park, neutral, into drive, it'll stay at park. The reason for that is the system is reading each gear based upon the transmission line pressure. So to be able to see a reading on that, we'll start the vehicle. We're in park, I'll shift to reverse now. I show reverse. Neutral will show park. We got overdrive, drive, low two, and low one. So if we're getting all of our shifting locations, we know the transmission is seeing the line pressures and is reading properly. So the next thing would be to go out and show the mile per hour while driving, which will be our speed. So as we're driving along, we're gonna show speed. And as speed increases, once we get up to a certain mile per hour, we should be seeing a shift. Now, if you're not getting any shifting and you're at 20 miles per hour, 30 miles per hour, and your RPMs are high, we know something's wrong. And we'll go back and we'll do our checks through the software and make sure that the system is seeing the speed. Now we're gonna go out and we're gonna try to drive the vehicle. One of the things I want you to pay attention to is the shifter. When I shift the gears, the system reads the gears based upon the line pressure in the transmission. So since the system is not hooked into the, uh, the Prindle switch at all, this is how it picks up the gears. So as I go to reverse, it'll pop up reverse. Neutral will show us park again. Then I'll be in overdrive, shift down to drive. Then I'll be at low two and low one. So now that we know that we're showing all of our shift positions, we're gonna go out and we're gonna go try to drive the vehicle. So as we're driving, our hope is Shifting is going to go one, two, three, and then it'll shift into drive and overdrive. All right, you ready? All right, first gear, second gear. fourth gear. So we're shifting through all of our gears currently. And we can even downshift. So going through some wiring connection checks and some software changes in the handheld we have eliminated all the ways that the system may not be shifting on your vehicle. If you're still having shifting issues, the next step that you would want to go into is probably the transmission itself. I hope this answers any kind of questions you had with the Fitech Ultimate LS. 
or go shift shifting side of the system. If you have any other questions, please comment them down below and visit our website at phytechefi.com for additional videos.